We're now going to look at secondary storage, which is any memory device not directly connected to the CPU. So main memory, like RAM, has its own buses that connect directly to the CPU. Secondary storage, on the other hand, has to go through input-output channels, it has to go through controllers, it can't, it hasn't got a direct channel to the CPU. And you need secondary storage so you've got long-term persistent storage, i.e. non-volatile storage, meaning that data is kept when power is turned off. You can't have a computer system without having at least a connection, even in the very first instance, to secondary storage. You need to have a permanent store of data. You can't lose your data every time you turn the computer off because how would you turn it on again? You need a place to get your instructions from. When you're evaluating secondary storage mediums, which we're going to look at in this video, there are some keywords you should really be using, some buzzwords. I won't patronise you by talking about how to it by defining each one. Speed in this context though means both reading speed and writing speed, so reading data from the devices and also writing data from the devices. They're usually they're not the same, um, but usually if one device is very quick to read data, it's also going to be very quick to write data, usually. Durability is how much damage it can kind of sustain. If you dropped it, for example, is it going to completely smash? Not for our device doing of anything. And also reliability. Um, is it going to work all the time? Is there a drop off point where it should probably, or, or on average, stop working? For example, hard drives are surprisingly unreliable in the sense they often stop working a couple of years into their, into their life. If you look at the average of all the uh, major brands, they drop off quite quickly, quite worryingly quickly, actually. So really, you should be using these words when you're evaluating secondary storage. Let's look at some secondary storage technology, the first one being optical storage, which stores the data. By the way, all data is stored as binary, so either one or zero, and this stores it as variations of height on the disk's surface. So, the disk is full of almost invisible pits and lands. A pit is a little divot, and a land is obviously where it's flat. And so a pit might represent a zero, a land might represent a one in binary. And so when light shined on this disk in a reader, let's do that again, when light is shined on a land, a flat bit, it just gets reflected up, so it's quite a standard reflection at that point. But if it hits a pit, it bounces off at a different angle, so it can tell when it reads this, whether or not it's representing a one or a zero. That's how you read data off an optical disk, but you write data with a laser that burns these variations, burns the pits into the disk. So a mini evaluation per unit in terms of a single DVD, a single CD, they have a small capacity and you don't get, you don't exactly have like 50 movies stored on a single CD because you can't, their capacity is not that large. Usually it's around a gigabyte in a kind of typical one. Obviously for like Blu-ray it would be more. They are fairly reliable and durable but can be easily damaged. So durable is a kind of funny one in this context because you can kind of look after a CD quite easily but then you can damage it very easily, if you know what I mean. So scratches, of course. Uh, but they are very portable. They're easy to transport and carry. You can store loads of them very easily. Let's look at magnetic storage, which instead of using a laser and a light to read-write data, this uses read-write heads that contain electromagnets. And so instead of a little divot being um, created in the disk like optical, parts of the disks are either made magnetized or demagnetized by the electromagnet in this little read-write head here. And so the disk spins and it can make parts of it magnetized or demagnetized when you're writing and it can tell if it's magnetized or demagnetized when it's reading. This is a hard drive by the way. A hard drive is kind of like the whole unit whereas obviously the disk, the hard disk is no surprises, the disk. And in terms of evaluation um, they are comparatively have a very large capacity you can have terabytes of magnetic storage if you're talking about hard disks and cheap compared to other long-term storage mediums they're usually quite reliable but as i said before they actually more often stop working after a certain amount of time but they're not very durable you can easily break them if you dropped it you would smash the disk and break it and they're not very portable i say generally because another example which isn't used anymore is um, cassettes and magnetic tape which would be very portable and also you can have external disk drives which are also magnetic but um, you know generally the type that go inside a computer aren't portable at all uh, because they are mechanical this is a mechanical disk obviously it's spinning around it is 
often quite noisy and also generate heat, which is a major disadvantage. But usually it's the capacity and the cheapness of it that kind of overrules the other disadvantages. The third type of storage we're going to be looking at is solid state storage, and this is a solid state drive, an SSD. And this is a type of flash memory which is non-mechanical, so it hasn't got a little spinning disk in it like the other two. This consists of just digital circuits, logic gates, for keep data and then you can change it, that's just what storage is. We can't really talk about how they work exactly because it's too complicated, um, it's just loads of little circuits. Uh, you can evaluate them quite nicely. They are a lot faster, their read write times are a lot uh, faster than hard drives for example, but per capacity, or per unit, sorry, uh, they're a lot more expensive. So. 128 gigabyte SSD might cost the same as a terabyte hard drive if I'm uh, right. It's been a while since I've bought either one of them. Um, they are quite reliable compared to other types because they are non-mechanical. There's less that can go wrong in that sense. Uh, if you don't know what this means, don't worry too much, but they don't need defragmentation. This will be covered at some future point where, and this is where data is kind of shuffled around so it's more efficient because it can often get misplaced and spread about in a hard drive but you don't need to do that with an SSD. They often have a much smaller capacity than magnetic, i.e. hard disks, because they have, because they're more expensive, sorry. Uh, they are silent though, they don't really produce much heat, which is another advantage you might want to talk about. Mostly because a majority of people can't afford to have a, or two terabyte lots of SSDs in their computer. A SSD is often used to store the operating system because it's very quick to load. So when you turn your computer on, it's very fast to load. But then we'll have most of their data stored in a mechanical magnetic hard drive. The final medium we're going to be looking at is cloud storage. It comes up all the time in exams. It's really uh, one of examiner's favorite topics, cloud storage. This is where data is stored on multiple servers in a remote location and you access it um, across the internet. And this is a bit of an odd one out because it's not its own storage in its own right. It's not a unique type of storage. They use, it used certainly to be magnetic and it still will use some magnetic, but now because of the speed and because it is getting cheaper, they'll increasingly use solid state storage. So this isn't its own type of storage. It will use the other two. As I say, you'll access cloud storage through the internet through a web-based API application programming interface, just a, a way to access your data online usually or through an app often. So now for a quick evaluation, these are just suggested points by the way, as are the other ones I've shown you so far. Lots of things you can talk about here, these are just pointers. Often multiple versions are kept by cloud storage providers, so if you need to go back to an old version, that's usually okay, so that's kind of counts for durability in that sense. But depending on who you choose, the service might not be reliable. I would say most cloud storage providers are reliable because if they weren't, first of all, there's huge startup costs to become a cloud storage provider. Unless you're Microsoft or Google, it's hard to just start one. But so they, usually they are reliable, but they may not be. The servers may be down quite a lot, which is quite worrying. So you wouldn't want to use that. Clearly, they're very, very portable. Your files can be accessed anywhere on the internet. So totally portable, but you do need an internet connection, that is another evaluation point you can make. A third more niche point is about the cost, mainly due to economies of scale. Large companies using cloud storage providers to store all their company's data may be cheaper and probably reduce energy costs, which is a really nice environmental evaluation point. But for smaller users, it may be more expensive because they might not be storing that much data, it might, it might get billed monthly as opposed to just a one-off payment for a larger hard drive, for example. So for the first three technologies we looked at, make sure you understand how they work roughly. The solid state ones are slightly harder to talk about, but they are just digital circuits. You won't be expected to know more from that. But cloud storage is slightly more about the evaluation, but they do use magnetic and now increasingly solid state storage.